I'm Nick. I am uh, a IT director at uh, Concentric Consulting in London. Uh, I've been involved in technology-related companies for pretty much my entire career, uh, spanning from sports timing uh, and the sports industry in, in general, through to uh, healthcare informatics, uh, the property industry, business improvement process, and now consulting uh, with a consultancy in London. And through that, um, I've had a slight entrepreneurial side to me as well. I started a business which uh, I um, had the opportunity to work with James and uh, Mark Ford uh, for probably a couple of years, I think, uh, which uh, was really good. And Mark asked me to come down and just uh, give, you, give a talk on, on uh, something which I think uh, you'll find useful in your, in your jobs and uh, hopefully you can make use of. Today's session is going to be quite interactive and collaborative. Um, I'm not going to talk for very long. I'm just going to take you through some slides um, of why I've chosen the topic that I've chosen and how we're going to run the session and then we're going to jump straight into some of the activities for the night. So, as you might imagine, um, through my career being involved in the technology industry, software development, infrastructure, uh, I've led creative teams, been involved in business development, sales, had exposure to a fairly large number of investors. I've been in quite a number of workshops during the course of, of, of that time. I find workshops quite painful, to be honest, and in the traditional sense I find them quite painful. So having something like this, sitting around the table, individuals waiting to be asked a question to, to pitch in, um, and the facilitator trying to drive out uh, collaboration without any form of prop and, and, and get to know the get to know the, the, the personalities around the table. Um, so re uh, of late, in particular this year, I've looked at other techniques that we could employ to try and drive a bit more collaboration and creative thinking amongst teams um, to get to more of a situation where people feel that they're part of the process, um, that it's non-confrontational, it's collaborative, um, it's fun, inclusive, experimental, um, at the same time being focused on particular topics and particular outcomes so we get some kind of benefit at the end of the day. And rather than sitting around the table working in groups, um, so you can see one of our recent uh, workshops we've, we've run within Concentra, individuals gathered around a whiteboard using post-it notes, creating uh, lists working through prioritizations, discussing ideas and drawing ideas and using visualization techniques to communicate those. And um, running through an entire process of perhaps developing a, uh, a software product or a solution, which is what we'll be doing tonight using a game called uh, the Lego Scrum Game. So one of the techniques that we came across um, was called game storming. I'm not sure if anybody's heard of game storming before. Obviously it's a plain word from brainstorming to game storming. Game storming is uh, a set of, uh, it's a toolkit of proven games uh, with requirements, principles and strategies associated with them. Um, the book, there is a book called Game Storming and it's uh, produced by David Gray and uh, Sonny Brown of Doodle Revolution Frame, if any of you have heard about the Doodle Re Revolution. It's quite an interesting website, you might want to have a look at it, um, and hear a talk on TED. Um, game Storming itself, as I say, is a, is, a, is, a, is a toolkit. There's a whole bunch of games that they, uh, that they communicate uh, in the book, which you can use for a variety of situations, and we'll be jumping into some of those today. Um, but in essence, it is collaborative and it is what you don't require is a whole bunch of expensive props and training associated with it. It is about people, paper and passion. So you need people engaged. You need you need to find topics that people will be engaged about and and it's it's the facilitator's role to to find those sort of fire starter topics to springboard the ideas and, and, and get people talking, get people collaborating and, and working together to make, create and innovate. So um, those are some of the buzzwords if you were to go on to the GameStorming website or get the book. 
uh, those are the sorts of things you come across. The games themselves are split up into social games, which are um, games which involve role play of individuals, um, storytelling, um, improvisation, um, through to sorting games, which are all about communicating and writing ideas on sticky notes, sorting those, putting them in positions, using things like affinity mapping to group them into in, into similar groups and then give them give them priorities and perhaps titles for those groups. So you might have transformation projects which come out of it. And lastly, synthesis games, which the idea behind synthesis games is that you uh, you would be making models. So you do things like use cardboard boxes to try and communicate an idea, cut it out, draw on it, stick things on it, so on and so forth, a as a group of individuals, and actually make prototypes of an idea. So one of the best ones I've seen is uh, for an iPhone app, where the team actually cut out a large um, piece of paper around this sort of size and actually drew the iPhone on the piece of paper, and they had someone behind it standing up, acting as the application, and doing certain things to describe how the application might work and then they'd swap it over to the next person actually telling the story of the user experience. And I thought that was really quite clever and uh, very effective in communicating what the application was trying to achieve. So, I can see many applications for the likes of game storming across product design, um, with, uh, used within creative teams, solution design, process engineering, Anything where you have those sort of, and in soft engineering it's very much so, when you start a particular project there is an end target in mind, but time after time that end, that end goal changes as you progress through the project. So the idea of having this goal at the beginning of the project, which is somewhat difficult to, to, to define, and you don't really know what you don't know, because you're going to find it out as you progress through the project. Um, game storming can really help to try and drive some of those ideas out and some, some understanding from, uh, from a group of individuals. The way that's done typically through game storming is that you would have an opening phase where you start with a, a set of ideas, I call them fire starter topics, and you try and uh, get a team to discuss those and come up with solutions or come up with further ideas or things that are holding them back or issues that need to be resolved actions that might need to be taken and really extrapolate those and, and, um, and then take that into an exploring phase. The exploratory phase is about discussing those ideas, putting them into groups, ruling ones out, justifying them, so on and so forth, right through to the closing phase, which is where you actually end up with a targeted list of actions or outputs at the end of the day, which might be as simple as a prioritised list of tasks. Um, with uh, names against them as who's doing what, that might be individuals, it might be collaborative companies, so on and so forth. So what's inside the box? This is, these are some of, the, uh, some of my favourite um, games within the game storming toolkit. Uh, the first one is Visual Agenda. So Visual Agenda pretty much does what it says on the tin. It's all about in a workshop, rather than having a bullet point list, a traditional way of communicating the agenda for the meeting, have some kind of fun, interactive way of communicating that. And that doesn't necessarily need to be a PowerPoint presentation. In fact, the most recent uh, workshop I ran using these techniques, I didn't use a PowerPoint presentation at all. It was all done on flip charts and printouts, so on and so forth, which was quite effective, and, um, and you can make it fun. You, know, you can involve some of your colleagues in enjoying that and join that, uh, that agenda together. The second one is Speedboat, which is one of the games I was going to play tonight, but I don't think we have enough people here to do that, so we're going to concentrate on, on the LEGO game. Speedboat uh, is all about trying to understand things that are holding you back from getting to your target. So what you do is around the Speedboat you have a statement, you have a statement at the top and you have a target, and you have anchors coming off of the boat, and the participants in the game will be using sticky notes to go and stick ideas around the anchors, around things, issues that they see in getting to that target. <laughs> and they would also stick ideas around the engine, um, which communicate things that we're 
perhaps good at, things that are driving you forward, things that you need to make better use of, so on and so forth. And I've got, I've got another slide specifically on this because we were going to play it this evening. Uh, but I found that really effective in driving ideas out of groups and in taking those ideas into things like affinity mappings where we take all of those issues and then group them into sections and end up with a list of prioritised tasks. Hoodoo is the next one. So Hoodoo is a game where outside, once you've gone through sort of the exploratory phase, you could have a list of tasks, a list of actions that need to be taken, which you can then put on a Hoodoo chart where um, you effectively have a, an action against a, a group of people or an individual. Um, so these are a prioritised list of tasks which, which can then be taken out and, and actioned um, after the meeting. So you're actually getting some kind of concrete um, output from from what you've been uh, doing during the workshop. Design the box is quite a cool one. So I mentioned this earlier. It's all about designing a particular product and trying to build a prototype in a very short space of time using props, um, fairly basic uh, 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 props, and then getting together as a group and presenting that to each other and getting some feedback and taking that outside of the meeting, perhaps feeding some of the outputs of that into things like Hoodoo um, or Affinity Mapping. Nuff test is a good one. So the Nuff test is all about each idea would be put on the chart and then individuals, participants in the game would be voting on three um, principles, whether, it's, whether the idea is new, whether it's useful, and whether it's feasible. And that's all tallied up. You can give weightings to them if you need to, um, to try and get to a point where you've actually ended up with a prioritised list of tasks um, which you've arrived at through a collaborative process. Some of the others which I don't think we have time to go into all of them, there's, I think there's about 83 at the moment in the book um, and there's probably more coming up on the website all the time. Low tech social network, that's a really good one to start workshops off. So individuals would come in and fill out a card, a little bit about themselves, stick it on a board Everybody would do that and then you start mapping similarities between each other and it's amazing the sort of similarities that you find out even down to the level of um, you know, you know, perhaps having similar, uh, similar colleagues in the past or having worked for similar companies and so on and so forth. The anti-problem is a very good one. It's about if you're struggling to find a solution to a problem, flip it on its head and think about what might make the problem worse. Um, come up with that or ideas around that and that can, that can drive out ideas on how you might solve the problem in the first place. Mission Impossible, is, yeah, you, can, you can pretty much uh, understand what that might be about. So it's building the ultimate, ultimate product that you might want to achieve. Um, and forced ranking is a ranking and sorting game which is very effective. So moving on, this is just, uh, excuse all the, the clip art. This is a visual agenda which I put together for a recent workshop, um, which I think worked fairly well to try and communicate what we were trying to achieve through the day. The workshop was about seven and a half hours at the end of the day, so we were all pretty knackered at the end of it. Um, but what this shows is the journey that we were going to take through the workshop, starting off with us, and a set of fire starter questions which were then laid out, leading into a set of games that we used in the opening phase and Speedboat was one of them, through to an exploratory phase where we started sorting and finding affinities between lists and tasks and, and, and even individuals within the team, and a closing stage where we used things like Hoodoo and Nuff Test and Forced Ranking to actually get a list that, um, of, of, of actions that we could then take away and um, we actually ended up with a fairly large number of what we call transformation projects at the end of it, with the end vision still being in the distance, not quite not quite clear to us just yet, um, but we're getting closer. The whole principle around the workshops, or some of the principles where they need to be fun, interactive, focused, individuals shouldn't be under pressure to leave the room if they need to take a break, um, and that we have some challenges along, along the way, we might even identify some opportunities through the day, which we, which we in fact did. Speedboat. So this is a game that we were going to play tonight, but I'll just briefly take you through our um, our experience of it. So as you can see, it's not so much clip art. 
this was created by a creative team that did a far better job than their mind. So effectively what the team did was we agreed on a statement and a goal, and these were all centered around the five starter topics, which I mentioned earlier on the visual agenda. The team then tried to brainstorm those and come up with ideas um, and things that were holding us back in getting to our target. This was all delivery related, so related to the delivery of services to customers. Um, and they also posted a whole bunch of post-it notes around the rear of the boat indicating things which we're, that we are good at and that we need to make more use of and we need to continue doing and perhaps communicate better throughout the organisation. So I thought this evening I just came up with two, um, a, a, target, a, a statement and a target that we could use uh, for this evening and it might be something you want to consider in future if there are, if we do get enough people coming through, just about Weaving Digital itself so that Weaving Digital uh, fosters and supports there, the digital community in and around Worthing and that perhaps the goal could be that Worthing Digital provides real value to its customers and we could think about that and think about things that are holding us back that we could do better and things that are driving us forward and then try and put those through an affinity mapping exercise and actually actions at the end of the day. So, this is what we did after the speedboat game. We went to an, into an affinity mapping exercise. So we came up with a whole load of issues that were identified, put them into affinities and groups without giving them any kind of label. So what's important there is not to try and give it a title, not to try and drive a process through, 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 through titles and, and, uh, and, and areas of concerns just yet. Just look for the similarities in those to begin with. And you'll, you'll end up with a far better outcome. And from that, we ended up with a whole bunch of programs, um, which are transformation programs for us. And um, we have been, been really effective in, in transforming parts of the business. So, coming on to what we are going to do this evening, hopefully this diagram is something that most of you would have seen before. It depicts a process called Scrum, which is a delivery or a software development technique. It's not necessarily a methodology. And the whole principle behind it, I'll, I'll be very brief here, is that sprint is an uh, Scrum is an iterative uh, development methodology or technique. Um, at the beginning of the process, you would define a product backlog, which is built out from your user stories or scenarios or features, so on and so forth. Um, and then at the beginning of a sprint, which could be a two or a four week iteration of development, you would agree what's on the sprint backlog, having estimated the work beforehand, um, and you would run with the sprint. So the sprint doesn't get broken, it is a two week closed section of work that you're going to deliver something of usable and tangible value to the customer at the end of the day. Each day you have a strong meeting um, where the, the, uh, the way we do it is we, we get, get in a circle, each team meets, we have a stress ball which we throw around to each individual in the team and it's their turn to just give an update on things that are impediments to them, any blockers that they've got, and what they worked on yesterday and what they're going to do today. We try to keep it down to sort of 15, 20 minutes per team, and it's very effective, and then it's up to the likes of the Scrum Master to then go away and try and remove some of those impediments from the team going forward. Um, <coughs> at the end of the sprint, you might very well have a demonstration to the customer or to the stakeholders in the project. Um, and you would then move into a sprint review and retrospective and a planning exercise for the next sprint and so on and so forth until you get to a point where you have a shippable product. So, what we're going to do this evening is we are going to use Lego. Driven a, a, a game with Lego, driven by the Scrum process to build a Lego city. And it doesn't have to be as extravagant as the one I see on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> the way I normally do this, and we run a number of sessions now, is um, each section is time boxed. Even the introduction is sort of 10 to 15 minutes. But I'm going to introduce the game now, just to speed things up, and explain what we've got on the desks, and what we're going to be doing, and then we're going to crack on with it. So, the purpose of the game is to illustrate and experiment with the Scrum process to actually build something using Scrum 
and understand some of the principles involved in it, like the product backlog, like the sprint backlog, sprint planning, sprint retrospectives, what velocity might mean, so on and so forth. <coughs> um, so the materials that are on the tables, and I think we've got enough people here for two teams, is there is a box of Lego, obviously, and within the box there are uh, some requirements cards, which the product owners will be taking you through, and the product owners are James and Keith this evening. Um, so those are the roles, we only have two products on. We're not going to bother too much with Scrum Masters tonight, we're just going to get on it and hope uh, and let you guys work together as teams. There are some rules. Um, the rules are that uh, each section of the game is time boxed, and the idea is that it is quite pressurised. Um, you try to get it, keep things moving fairly quickly, um, and that you need to be working as a team. Um, we will be estimating the work using planning poker. I don't know if anybody's used planning poker before. Anybody? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have some planning poker cards in the boxes as well, and you'll be using those cards to estimate the, the effort required to deliver each requirement. On the planning, on the actual requirement cards, there's also an indication of business value. So the business value indicates the value of that requirement to the product owner. And it's just something for you to consider during the course of the game. <coughs> I think that is probably it for introducing the game. Um, yes, one more rule, and that is that the deliverables that you produce during the scrum do not count unless they're on the surface of the city when the time for that particular phase ends. And your, your product owners will be responsible for accepting or rejecting the work. It's automatically going to be rejected if it's not on the city surface when the time ends for that particular phase. Uh, but the product owners can also reject the work if they don't meet the requirements that they've specified. <coughs> okay, then we'll be moving into uh, we'll be moving into the requirements overview next, which the, the product owners will take through. We've got 15 minutes for that. Um, then into an estimation exercise. I, I think we probably won't need the full 20 minutes, but we have 20 minutes anyway. Um, the estimation exercise, you'll be using post-it notes just to stick what you estimate as a team for that particular requirement onto the card. And you're going to do that for the full backlog. I think there's 12 or 13 requirements in each box. We'll then move into the sprints. Uh, the sprints are run in three phases. Sprint planning, sprint, ex sprint ex execution, and sprint review. So we have three minutes for planning seven minutes for the execution, and five minutes for the review. Um, and we're going to be running three sprints, so you're going to do that three times. And uh, the idea is to build as much of the city as you can. And I think that probably takes care of most things. Are there any questions on the LEGO game in particular and what we're going to be doing? Shall we get started? Okay, so...